cars can do a lot of things. They drive, they park, um, they've got brakes. Um, there's just very good things. Navigation, that's a good one. There's, uh, there's navigation. But these days, cars can do quite a bit more. And uh, we are here together with Harsha today to take a look at how Godot together with RenderCore can be used in the automotive industry. So please, welcome Harsha to the stage. Well, thank you. Um, I assume not many know about how the automotive uh, world works, so um, I'll, I'll briefly go over what Vistian does, how the automotive world works, um, the software that ultimately gets into cars, right? Um, so Vistian is, is um, a tier one, so you have the OEMs up front, and then there are companies that supply to the OEMs, and then there are tier twos and tier threes that supply a bit more to, to the whole ecosystem. Um, so Vistian was spun out of Ford in ages ago, uh, early 2000, and similarly GM spun out Delphi, now it's, it's you know, uh, another company. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we primarily make money out of manufacturing uh, car dashboards. Um, we, <clears throat> we have primarily four product lines. Um, what we call as the instrument cluster is, is what the driver sees as meters, um, the infotainment system, and now uh, displays which, which go from pillar to pillar or, or the entire car, and then electrification in terms of battery management and, and so on. So Vistian has had a you know, long history in, in graphics. Um, it started out uh, with, with doing 2D stuff. Um, with uh, GDT, this is primarily a graphics uh, tool chain that was developed in-house, uh, runs on a micro, um, like, like an ESP32 uh, kind of micro. Um, it's still in production. It's, um, it it's probably has gone into about 20 million cars, 30 million cars by now. Um, then um, Kanzi, which is probably a leader in, in, in automotive graphics, um, many of you probably not have heard of, of this company. Um, it's, it's owned by um, Thundersoft, which is a Chinese company right now. Um, they, they are a premier uh, 3D engine and a tool chain uh, developer in the automotive world. Uh, QT, we, we know they, um, they, they have been um, a leading um, a provider of, of, of the graphic stack. Um, I guess Tesla uses them, um, an open source version. They do also have a commercial version of, of QT. Um, <clears throat> so about roughly around 2018, we, we thought about um, why should we pay um, anything to any of these guys? Um, maybe it's, it's better to, to own the entire stack. And we started with, with uh, developing our own 3D engine. And that's what we call as render core. So I'm, I'm going to show you a small reel of, of um, uh, that's um, out out in production. So some of it, some of it is, is proto, uh, but it, it gives you an idea of, of what this is actually the Harley Davidson bike, um, which is a, a newest version of their bike. It it um, this is the proto, and, and then this is the real version. Um, it has safety telltales. Um, the, the gauges that you see is, is 2D represented, but it's all done in 3D. And <clears throat> yeah, um, more, more things. This is combining both infotainment and uh, uh, what we call as the meter or, or, um, and so on. Um, this is a typical ADAS uh, rendering. Um, you know, you, you see reflection on the cars, uh, all the 3D objects that are rendered. So the signals come in real time. This gets rendered in real time, um, including the detection of pedestrians and so on. Um, There's another system out in production. It, it's a uh, mid-sized SUV called uh, XUV700. Um, it, it actually runs on, on a Qualcomm device. Uh, you can think of this device like your phone from eight years ago. Uh, <coughs> And, and it, it's got an Adreno GPU. Um, it, it runs two operating systems, a QNX and an Android. Um, the, the gauges that you see is, is all running on um, a QNX uh, hypervised system. Um, it has one gigabyte of RAM to, to run that gauges and, and a QNX operating system. The Android takes up about three gigabytes uh, of, of RAM. Um, 
Yeah. Um, so, what is actually RenderCore, right? Um, so, RenderCore is, is a custom 3D engine um, that that was was built within Vistion, and we use um, Godot as a compositor or an editor on top of it. Um, so. Uh, th this, you know, next couple of slides will will just go over <clears throat> how how this combination works. What are the changes we did to to uh, Godot and why we chose Godot as as, as, a, as an editor, right? Um, so, long story short, we we got bitten by the recent uh, company big company bug, uh, which which you know um, which was the forethought into using uh, Godot actually. Um, so how does the workflow look like? Um, we have custom exporters into Figma, into, um, into Maya, and also into Blender. So we export um, an extended version of GLTF called GLTF Plus. And uh, the GLTF Plus basically includes custom properties, custom shaders. Um, it also exports uh, uh, some scripts with it. So if you're using Maya, you can export Mel scripts. If you're using Py you know, a Blender, you can export some uh, custom Python scripts. Um, Figma as well. So from Figma, you can export a component library. So you kind of use the same components um, that you use in Figma across an IVI system or the, the infotainment system. And then um, we have uh, a runtime, which is um, there for Windows, QNX, Android, or Linux. Um, and and it, it primarily provides a real-time preview of whatever gets exported. Right? So Godot is an editor. Uh, primarily, we, we extended the plugins. Uh, we have a custom import uh, into the Godot engine or the Godot editor. Um, and, it, and it, you know, takes takes inputs from from all this and and uh, uh, provides a visualization in in um, you know later on Colin uh, my uh, colleague here will, will show um, how the export format converts um, scripts shaders um, everything into a format that that can run on a real target so just to give you a background of, of HMI in cars right uh, we will start from um, the very end on, on the left. So you have two basic screens. So one is the infotainment screen, and one is the driver information screen. This could run on two different SOCs. Um, and what we call as, as the smaller blocks there are called as the vehicle interface processor. These are uh, sending CAN messages from, from the engine, or from the braking systems, or from door. Um, and and you, that's what you see as door ajar and things. Then uh, with, with um, like you see in the Model 3 where you have just one screen. Um, this is also typically running a big SOC, and, and you have both the infotainment as well as the, the safety on the same uh, SOC as well. So uh, a very complicated um, slide with, with lots of uh, overlaying windows um, to, to make it easier. Um, think of it as two operating systems trying to render to the same screen, uh, similar display, and it's overlaid on, on top of each other. Um, there are essentially, to, to address safety in cars, um, we, we have something called a safety render. This safety render does not do any dynamic allocation. Everything is static. The icons are all predefined. There's a checksum. So any time that you don't see an engine light on um, and, and the display is blank, the, the system re needs to reset and, and come up. Um, and then there is RVC, which is the rear view camera. So as soon as you start your um, engine and you put um, your gear shifter in, in reverse, you would see a, a camera view. And this needs to happen within uh, two seconds of, of, of uh, the system coming up. <clears throat> so um, essentially, what, what does Godot offer, um, right? So we, we integrated all of this into the Godot editor. So you can do the safety. Um, you, ca you can do an early HMI. So when you open the car, the car would have already started uh, booting the, the entire system. You would see a splash screen. And then the, the safety comes up. Uh, which is the telltales, and, and, and then you have the driver information system and, and the uh, DI. So um, it, 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 today it, it provides us a unified tool chain to do everything. Then um, we, we have um, 
different integration for, for the 3D engine, right? It needs to run multi-instance, it needs to render to separate displays and, and so on. Um, so that's why we, we went with a custom uh, runtime rather than with Godot and trying to get Godot into a car, which would have to go through a certification process, which has to go through uh, static quality tests. Uh, we are liable for it. So just to have a comparison, um, the, the runtime, render core runtime is, is about 10 megabytes uh, in, in compiled format. Godot is probably about three to four X or maybe five X that size. Um, our, our systems uh, typically have one gigabyte of RAM. Um, so um, yeah, this is uh, a composition, um, a deployment strategy of, of saying how, uh, how things need to be loaded during startup and, and, and so on. Uh, let, let me skip a few slides um, and, and show um, what changes we make to, to run uh, Godot, right? Uh, <clears throat> since we were, um, you know, um, let's say we had a few things to, um, to accomplish uh, to maintain compatibility with earlier systems, we needed multi-script support. So um, Godot only supports one script for, for one node. So we, we had to do multi-script support, and, and especially with C hash and, and C sharp, um, which, which was a tricky. Um, Clay you know, and, and, and team really helped us to, to get started and, and do modifications um, to the entire engine and the um, rendering format. So we have a custom rendering engine. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard of Monotype. Um, they're a big font provider. They have their own custom um, uh, font engine, so we have to support both free type and monotype. Um, then the big thing, right? Um, we have our APIs. Uh, we had to support the same custom um, uh, APIs uh, with uh, Godot's um, C sharp. And essentially, when if you if you look at this, um, it's everything that you see is, is converted to C plus plus. So we, we cannot do AOT, we cannot do JIT, um, there cannot be a mono runtime on, on the end system. So we have to have traceability. So C, plus, uh, C sharp is, is converted to uh, C++. Um, and then multi-script, right? So you can attach as many scripts. Uh, Colin will show you uh, uh, an example where we have one node with, I don't know, 25 scripts or 30 scripts. <coughs> um, and then um, this is a GUI skinning where we have an icon and, and it needs to be shaded with, with different colors um, at the runtime. Um, so there is uh, what we call as um, a GUI skinning table that we added to, to Godot. So you can specify parameters and binding and, and so on. Um, tricky parts. So uh, when we import uh, GLTF, um, we have custom shaders in GLSL. This had to be converted to uh, GD shader. So we wrote a custom um, importer to, to convert it to GD shader. And once it's converted, then again, export it back into GLSL. So we, we tried to uh, get GLSL running directly. This was a kind of Herculean task. So we kept it aside and, and then moved on. Um, GLTF plus. So if you're using a uh, blender or, or if you're using Maya, you can do um, shader FX based node um, uh, with that, you know, or with blender, you can also do the same thing. Um, Mel or Python scripts. So all of this can be exported with the exporter and import it into uh, Godot. Um, yeah, this, this is an example of, of GLTF plus and then um, exporting out, right? So mesh is uh, index compressed, um, images are, are compressed with the specific either Power VR or with uh, KTX, ETC1, ETC2, uh, binary shaders, uh, localization, essentially, you know, where you can have text translations. Um, yeah, um, one last um, example, and then I'll, I'll let Colin show you um, everything with, with Godot. So um, this is actually 
a production version of, of uh, something that was done in Godot and, and it's right now in production. Um, this, this is a Harley Davidson bike. Uh, it has a 10.3 inch screen, uh, two gauges, an infotainment system all combined. Um, yeah, and, and you'll see this uh, you know, uh, demo running in Godot as well. So. You want me to hold and then you can. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, so we have two demos. Uh, one is, uh, we call it benchmark demo, because it's uh, just for demonstration. But uh, yeah, this is Godot. Uh, it, it has our uh, scene. Uh, it consists of a few menus, so the things that are not visible are going up. That's why it looks like this. But uh, basically, uh, you have all these uh, nodes, things. Uh, th this, if we run it, Yeah, so this is the preview in, in Godot. Uh, you interesting, uh, the interest, and let me uh, let it run a little bit more. Yeah, so it's 3D. Uh, there will be one rotating car in a second. Yeah, so few menus. Uh, you can see here it's uh, it's integrated in Godot that the remote connection is working. So if we go to the right node, uh, for example, here uh, we have in in the metadata some custom properties we are adding. So you can see live view here of how the things are changing. There is a gear, for example, here three three. So the remote is working. Um, the so this is one of the demo. The other thing that is related, uh, okay, so um, we can also here demonstrate uh, how the multi-script uh, is working. So for example, this is the interesting note that, uh, so we added some here, some extra, extra <laughs> thing. <laughs> so this is with 107 scripts. Uh, so we can expand it there, uh, yeah. So here we put the the paths to the scripts. How we do that? Uh, so b yeah, we had to modify the, the engine to, to put this here uh, in the inspector. We, we initially tried with some plugins, but it was not really looking good. Um, otherwise, uh, what basically what we do is that we have some master uh, multi-script uh, that is auto-loaded here that is uh, at the end, going through all the nodes and uh, reading all the scripts and executing their process uh, uh, functions. So in general, it's working. Uh, the, the the properties they are going in a meta, and they are uh, yeah. These are because most of the scripts are not don't have public properties, but there are a few that has here, so they are visible here. Uh, this this at the end is uh, so with our plugins we export this like this uh, this is going in one big uh, so there are a few expected errors here don't worry about this uh, um, but at the end this is producing you can see now here it's written it's processing this uh, C sharp scripts so it is producing now the C plus plus out of them uh, and I won't wait this to finish it will take one two minutes but uh, there, this is exported thing so here it we have uh, visual studio project oh everything is c++ all this the data is uh, is here the scripts the the scenes so we can just uh, run and this is now outside of godot this is just running using our uh, render core runtime and it is producing similar results um, of course, yeah, this is all C++ code. You can uh, you can compile it for QNX, uh, uh, for example, or other embedded operating system. Um, yeah, okay. And the last thing we wanted to show is the yeah, this is the Harley Davidson demo. Uh, it's again like it's it seems 2D uh, when you run it, but at the end you can see there is a depth here. So. Um, 
we can ag we can again see some uh, yeah some preview in the editor. Um, uh, yeah, here it's printing some errors because it's trying to connect to one server that is not. That we are getting the data usually from the that is simulating the vehicle, but here it's not working. So this is expected. Um, so this yeah. is, these are the demos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just just to conclude, um, we have uh, 20 active um, Godot developers um, who are primarily working on the, on the engine and the editor, and about uh, 100 using uh, Godot editor to to do uh, different um, automotive HMIs. Um, we are probably end of the year, we are, we are probably the biggest enterprise using Godot. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thanks, thanks to everybody who contributed, who enabled. Um, we, we hope to uh, open source, clean up the editor part of it, and, and make the runtime available for Windows and, and uh, Linux and then charge uh, royalty for, for the OEMs to, to pay. Um, not, not as much as others do, but at least something. <laughs> so this is a custom fork of Godot, um, I assume. So um, is there any strategy to, for example, cherry pick certain fixes from the official uh, from the OG repository into your custom build, or how are you basically uh, keeping it keep, keeping it up to date uh, with the, with the um, with the Godot version? That's um, MIT. Good, good, good question. Um, you know, currently we are at four zero one. We we hope to migrate to uh, whenever four four dot two is released. Um, we we have a merge strategy. It's, it's um, most of the code is, is currently some parts of the engine are modified, which, which could be easily merged. Um, large parts of the plugin that you see in the editor is all written in, in C hash or C sharp, so it's it's easy to maintain. Um, some things that we want to upstream is is like this. Uh, importer for uh, KTX, importer for um, uh, the GLSL conversion. Um, maybe somebody could use the C Sharp to, to do multi-scripting you know, support and, and so on. So this is something that we want to upstream. Um, and and um, yeah, um, that's, that's the idea. Currently, we have not thought about the entire uh, workflow of how uh, upstream versus how we maintain the fork would, would happen. Um, but yeah, um, let's see how it goes. Um, on the hardware side for the sensor data, did you guys implement things like SPI, SQRC, GPIO in Godot, or you have something separate for that? No, it's, it's completely separate. So we have something as a data layer, a data pool, where it's like an iOS or you have a core data. So there's a small engine that, that sits in between um, the vehicle data that's coming in and then it translates. So what happens is when you're in Android, the data comes in, in, in Java. Um, when you're in QNX, the data comes through uh, a Q, which is a C++ based. So we have to maintain um, the same properties across both, but have a different business logic side or, or, or um, the IO side of it. Uh, incredibly impressive. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, my question would be, have you run into issues with management specifically trying to suggest like a relatively grassroots open source game engine as a compositor like Godot? And if so, how did you end up convincing like upper management that this is like your preferred uh, workflow? Well, we didn't have to convince uh, upper management to, to, do, to do much. So it was basically um, uh, uh, you know, without taking names, and, and you know, we we got we got canned by by a company saying that you have to pay a royalty for whatever you are doing. We said we don't want to, and and we we switched um, from using you know that closed source to an open sourced one. Um, the only thing that we had to take care of was that 
we don't affect any anything um and we hopefully in, in sooner we'll announce a few OEMs that that will be using Godot um which would be great you know let's see how it goes that's it for the time thank you very much for your talk thanks